Casey Thunder. So the best player, the most talented player is Kevin Durant to wear the Sonics and Thunder jersey. But the answer is Russell Westbrook. Yeah, I would agree. Westbrook has the longevity. He has a franchise record in points. He has an NBA record for triple doubles. A lot of that coming with the Thunder. And also, he did not snake the franchise. But we also have to give a shout out to the Seattle Supersonics legend as well, Gary Payton. But the GOAT for OKC Thunder is Russell Westbrook. Today, we are picking every NBA team's GOAT. This is part one of two. And this part will consist of all Western Conference teams. Here is the criteria used to pick each goal. Number one, longevity. Number two, team success. And number three, talent slash individual success. There are only two rules for this video. Number one, we must agree to pick one GOAT per team. If we disagree on who the GOAT is for a team, then we must fight it out in the ring. But it's not gonna matter because the end result is gonna be the same as it always was with me whipping your ass. Okay, maybe not. But we have to convince each other on why our player is the GOAT. Rule number two is that you have to smash that subscribe button. All right, let's get into the next team. All right, let's start off with one of the tough teams, the Pelicans slash Hornets. Who is your GOAT? So I think everybody knows this between two people, Chris Paul, Anthony Davis, and it's a tough one. But for me, I ultimately went with Anthony Davis. The reason being, he was the number one overall pick for them and he lived up to that status, in my opinion. Uh, he played an extra season over Chris Paul. Yes, he had one less playoff series, but ultimately it was like five games first round exit. Neither of them got past the second round. And Anthony Davis was a monster in those, uh, especially in that Portland uh, series where they ended up beating him before they uh, lost to the Warriors. And I think I felt like uh, Anthony Davis didn't have as great of as a team as Chris Paul did. That's just my opinion. So yeah, I ultimately went with Anthony Davis. I went with Chris Paul, leader in assists, more playoff appearances, which is one thing I would like to look at as well. Another thing I went with Chris Paul is that those three years, there was no debate who was the number one point guard in the NBA. In my opinion, it was Chris Paul in all three of those years. Chris Paul, Pelicans was the best Chris Paul we've seen in his career. But for that, I could say like th their big man, I don't think anyone was better than Anthony Davis really yeah that's for, true for too that, for that stretch. all right so let's break it down here so talent wise they're basically similar playoff success wise they're basically similar anthony davis is an extra season anthony davis is the leader in points as well so i think with tiebreaker wise i think we have to go anthony davis just because he has an extra longevity by one year because talent same team success the same so i feel like tiebreaker goes to anthony davis yeah, we'll agree on that. Now you know how the video works, so let's pick up the pace, starting with the Mavericks. I think there's no debate. Yeah. It's Dirk Nowitzki, NBA champion, took out one of the greatest teams ever in Miami Heat in the finals. And uh, there's just no debate. Utah Jazz. This is tough, slightly, but I ultimately went with Carl Malone over John Stockton. The reason being, Carl Malone's the second in all-time points. Carl Malone has more MVPs than John Stockton. So ultimately, he was recognized by the NBA as the better player overall. Let's move on to the Rockets. I feel like it has to be Hakeem, the dream large one. Yeah. Two-time NBA champion. Shout-out does go to James Harden, Yao Ming but it has to be Hakeem Olajuwon. Yeah, easily. I mean, titles over everything. All right, last one, Timberwolves. Easy, Kevin Garnett, no debate. I know Kevin Love is there. Maybe Carl Town Anthony Towns in the future has a case to be that GOAT, but it's Kevin Garnett. He hit, carried that team. He had an MVP for that team back uh, in 04, I believe. And yeah, it's just easily Kevin Garnett. Let's move on to a tough one, the Denver Nuggets. I don't know if it's tough. I don't think it is anymore. Every, you would think it's Carmelo or Jokic, but you have to throw in Alex English as well. But at the end of the day, it's Nikhil, Nikola Jokic. He ha he's the NBA champion. He's the best player currently in the NBA for the last couple of years. Two year, uh, two time MVP. Could also be a third time MVP by the time this season currently concludes. So yeah, I, I think it's Nikola Jokic. Even though Alex English may have the stats in terms of points ahead of him, but again, NBA titles matter more to me. And that's Ex Jokic. Exactly the point. Nikola Jokic is the goal for the Denver Nuggets. Reason being is in his six or seven seasons, I don't know exactly, he's already regarded as one of the best big men to ever play the game, right? Yeah. In history, not not just the league, in history. And game-changing big as well. Game-changing big, finals MVP, clear number one reason why the Nuggets won the title was because of Jokic and their first and only title. Let's move on to the LA Clippers. This is another tough one because, like, again, poverty franchise, I don't care <laughs> but what I say about that. Um, it's between a bunch of people. Obviously, you got to throw in Bob McAdoo in there. There's Blake Griffin. If Kawhi Leonard wins a championship this year, it will be changed to Kawhi Leonard. This is where I went with Chris Paul. That's why I leaned Anthony Davis on the other one. I just felt like Chris Paul, the minute he got to the um, the Clippers, is like how you said, one of the he was probably one of the best point guards in the league. Probably was the best point guard in the league at that time. He led them to constant playoff success. 
uh, not success, sorry, constant playoff appearances. appearances. Uh, if it wasn't for injuries to him and Blake, they probably could have won a title or even went past the second round. But yeah, for me, I ultimately went to Chris Paul. He was the point god. That's where the name probably got established as well. Leader in assists. So when I think Clippers, you know, good era, I think of those Lob City Clippers, who is the leader of that team? Chris Paul. As good as Blake Griffin was, as good as DeAndre Jordan was, Chris Paul was the best player on this team. Chris Paul led them to multiple playoff appearances. So my answer was Chris Paul so as we well. Agreed. All right, next up, the Memphis Grizzlies. This one, it is tough. It's It gives me a lower version of Stockton Malone, which is Mark Gasol and Mike Conley. Obviously, uh, Gasol ended up getting traded, but then Conley ended up getting traded a year and a half or even half a year later. But I ultimately went with Mark Gasol, the defensive player of the year. They had a finals or a co uh, conference finals appearance together, but Mark Gasol was the more... Uh, he had the more all-stars. He ha he was the guy you go to. Shout out also goes to uh, Zach Randolph, Zebo himself. But I think Marcus is the answer. As much as I really wanted to give it to Mike Conley. Yeah. Um. Another factor that we're gonna consider is individual success. Defensive Player of the Year is an individual award, but Marcus All won it. So that's another factor. I would say leader in points. The big boss for Barcelona is my goal for the Memphis Grizzlies. The Warriors had a lot of great players in their franchise like Will Chamberlain, but the obvious answer is Steph Curry. He is a four-time champ, back-to-back -back MVP, and has one of the best commentary calls ever. Shout out to David Robinson and many Spurs legend, but the GOAT for the San Antonio Spurs is Tim Duncan. The big fundamental is a five-time NBA champion and a two-time MVP. The Sacramento Kings GOAT was the triple-double king, Oscar Robertson. The big O won an MVP in 1964 with the Cincinnati Royals, who are now known as the Kings. This is probably the hardest one we have. Portland Trail Blazers, who did you end up picking as the Blazer GOAT? Yeah, it was very tough until I found a couple stats. Clyde the Glide Drexler is my Portland Trail Blazer GOAT. Clyde the Glide, 11 times in the playoffs, two times in the finals with the Portland Trail Blazers, ultimately not winning any. He lost to the Bulls and he lost to the Bad Boy Pistons in 90. 90 in the Bulls, no, 92 against the Bulls, 1990 against the Bad Boy Pistons. And Clyde the Glide was always one of the leaders of that team and uh, unfortunately never won a title with them. I actually went with Damian Lillard and shout out LaMarcus Aldridge, shout out Bill Walton, ultimately Bill Walton. I could have considered him, but he had like, his short, his career was short uh, with them. But I went Dame Lillard. One factor is loyalty. Number one in points, obviously three pointers all up there. He did not have the finals appearances. So after hearing your argument, I might have to switch it up, but it was such a toss up for me because I feel like when you do the GOAT status, you got to consider what they brought to that city as a whole as well. Like. That's why we had Russell Westbrook over Kevin Durant, right? But I feel like hearing your argument, it might have to be Clyde the Glide, but let's, let's just figure this out quickly. Why is, is it because of the finals appearances? Yes, and also, uh, he made it, like the playoffs almost every year. I think every year since he got to Portland. Yeah, I think it was in 84 to 95, around then, 94. Yeah. So like those 10, 11 years, he made the playoffs, right, instantly. And then obviously finals appearances. Damian Lillard could never do that. Do that. Um, there were some beasts in the West, right? Like he had to go past the Lakers, right? Damian Lillard couldn't get past the Warriors. So ultimately, yeah. yes, Warriors may have been the better franchise or f better super team, but Clyde the Glide did it twice. And unfortunately losing to the Bulls and Pistons were dynasties yeah. and So I'll defer to you. I, I, I think you, you won me over with that argument for sure. So ultimately I think Clyde the Glide Drexler is the Portland Trailblazer go. Phoenix Suns. Another tough one, but the more research I did, it wasn't, I. this one is where longevity mattered. I went with the Canadian, Steve Nash. He has two MVPs. He was constant. He was one of the best point guards. You said Chris Paul earlier. I think he was up there with them for those years. Uh, Charles Barkley was the other guy we considered, is, but then he only had four years with them. I know he had a finals appearance with them, but Steve Nash had many more years. He had two MVPs. He led them. He was their leader. And uh, shout out to Devin Booker. He might honestly surpass Steve Nash eventually, but again, a little too early for him. Steve Nash was my Um Charles Barkley has a finals appearance and an MVP with the Phoenix Suns. Only four years. Steve Nash was drafted by the Suns and then left and came back. Two times MVP, assist leader for the franchise. I think he made the conference finals twice as well, but I went with Steve Nash as well. So I agree with you, but I also agree with you here. Devin Booker is not far away. But last but not least, probably the toughest one, your Los Angeles Lakers. Okay. I'm going with the man who made me love basketball, Kobe Bean Bryant, Hall of Famer, statue holder, two-time Jersey retired guy, 
but I know what everybody's gonna say. We're gonna play devil's advocate for sure because I feel like yours is Kobe Bryant as well. But Kobe Bryant, like I said, all 20 years with one franchise, five championships out of the seven he has been in, an MVP. Obviously, he could have had more. Obviously, the all he was all-time scorer for them, which means he was top five all-time as well. So yeah, I ultimately went with Kobe Bryant, but Dan, like, this is one of the teams that when you look at the all-time roster, you could say Shaq if you want to, but again, longevity is where Kobe takes it for me. But like, there's Shaq, there's Wilt, there's Jerry West, there's Elgin Baylor, right? There's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and ultimately, Magic Johnson, I will let you take the floor with him. You also forgot LeBron James. <laughs> no, it's too early for LeBron. Him. LeBron James did bring some success as well. Success. Magic Johnson is a five-time NBA champion, so is Kobe Bryant. Magic Johnson, finals MVP, as a rookie, Kobe Bryant also won finals MVP as well in the both of them, both of them without Shaq. Yeah. We can't comment about teammates because they both had amazing teammates, yeah. right? Like Kobe and Shaq, Magic and Kareem, obviously one of the greatest duos ever. Magic also has a 3P, Kobe also has a 3P as well. So it's very tough. Talent wise, it's very similar. Ultimately, I am going to go with Kobe Bryant just because of the longevity. I feel like that's the tiebreaker based on our criteria. Team success is there. Individual success is there franchise stats are there it just comes down to longevity and uh, kobe Bryant takes i think magic himself also said that kobe is the greatest laker of all time so we gotta defer to the man himself these are all the western conference team's goats comment down below any changes you would make if you enjoyed the video please smash the like button and we'll catch you guys on the next one peace